Um, I've spent the last two parts of the last two summer working with Dr. Bernard Lafayette, who was a, a close friend of, of um, Martin Luther King, um, who was the uh, director of the Poor People's Campaign, and and he really him and King both saw that the nonviolence needed to be institutionalized and internationalized. Um, they actually had a discussion uh, the day before uh, Dr. King was assassinated about that very topic. So, so what I found is that Kingian nonviolence, the principles that King laid out, provides a conceptual framework that is accessible enough for college freshmen, for we're, we're starting to bring it in even earlier into high schools and to middle schools, but also comprehensive enough to really create, you know, have it as a foundation of the entire peace studies, um, the, the entire peace studies program. So just basically, King lays out his six principles of nonviolence in uh, in a, uh, a famous essay called My Pilgrimage to Nonviolence, which um, was published as a chapter in Stride Towards Freedom in 1958. Um, these principles are really the foundation on which um, we kind of take off of with all of the other, with all of the other topics that, um, that we study in our Peace Studies program. So when we talk to, so I, I teach a class on conflict analysis. These are the principles we use. Um, when we have, you know, um, when, when we have other classes, I teach a class called Nonviolence in the Civil Rights Movement, where these are the, so these are the kind of, kind of universally used as the conceptual framework. Um, and what I found is that they resonate with students, and, and, and again, you know, nonviolence is a way of life for courageous people. Okay, so so we can superficially we can say, okay, well, there's th what King taught and what Gandhi taught before him was that um, nonviolence is a way of life. It's not just a political strategy in kind of the Gene Sharp school of thought. It's actually a, a way of life, and and it's something. And so when we talk about peace habits with students, we can talk about this. Belo the beloved community. So when we talk about positive peace, we talk about the beloved community. Um, and it really seems to resonate with students, and as they progress through the Peace Studies program, they just get deeper and deeper, and they always have these principles to tie into, which, which I find um, really valuable. The, um, the, the other um, the other thing that King lays out, really in his letter to Birmingham jail, he lays, he lays four steps out, but um, Bernard Lafayette kind of extended them to six to kind of pair with the six principles, are these um, six steps to nonviolent social change. So when we talk about, um, when we talk about strategy, when we talk about strategy for positive social change, these are the, the these are the basic steps we use, um, and 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 again, it what I find is that they're accessible. It's real easy. Okay, so information gathering. That's the first thing you do when you come into a conflict. You you get information, um, and, and and on down the line, education. You had you educate your your opponents. You educate your friends. You educate people that are sitting on the side. So so we have this great kind of framework, and what, what we found really in the Peace Studies program, when, when, when it was being envisioned, we, you know, again, it was really scattered, and what we've kind of come up with now is the idea that there's three main components, right, so critical social analysis, so getting students to understand, because, and, and we all know in K-12, students it's drilled into them, and even when they come to college, when they come to college on the first day of class, and so, so how many years have you been in school? And okay, 15 years, you know, something like that. Okay, so what's the goal, right? Well, so really they're in college with the idea that there's some fixed reality, and they're just elevating their status within that fixed reality. 
And so to be able to, to engage in critical social analysis, to look at that interaction, which Freire called like interpretive, right, or, or um, integrative, the idea that we're not just adapting to reality, that we interact with it in really meaningful ways, um, that kind of critical social analysis, we can use King's teaching, especially his, his emphasis on empathy and the interconnectedness of our human community. Also, that principle, the, the third principle, about attacking the forces of evil, not the persons doing the evil. So, so right there, we can say, OK, look, let's not get distracted with personalities, especially in this election year. It's real easy to get distracted by these personalities. But to say, look, there are these social structures in place. And that's where Dr. King really you know, dove deep into the idea of attacking those those, he called them forces of evil, but social conditions which cause oppression um, um, and violence. Um, and, and I'll just skip that second one for a moment because the, the third one's pretty easy too. I mean, the idea that we have this peace studies program, we can, we can meet in class and we can talk about all kinds of stuff and we read really inspiring stuff and we can feel all warm and fuzzy inside, but at the end of the semester or at the end of the program, if we leave and we don't do anything about it, then we've just kind of spun our wheels and it's been some kind of exercise. And so, but when you ask students, well, why aren't you engaged? The number one thing that they'll say is, well, I don't know how to get engaged. Like, I don't know, what, what am I supposed to do? Well, here we have, that's where we, we draw upon King's six steps of nonviolent social change and say, look, whatever the conflict, whatever the scale, if it's with your roommates or if it's in your community or if it's in, you know, if it's in the world, here are these six steps. And just about all students can engage in those six steps in a real meaningful way. Um, now, the, the, um, it also, those six steps, one of the steps is direct action. Now, when we talk about nonviolence, a lot of times people look at it and students look at it synonymously with direct action. Well, let's go out and protest. Let's go out and hold a sign and do something good, right? And, and, and that certainly there's a place for that. But it's one of, 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 of a whole framework of things that we can do um, and we need to put that we need to put that in place. Um, he also talked about the role in the critical social action. He talked about the role of love, and 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 that's really really you know fundamental to King's teaching. And so so the idea that violent violent solutions are temporary solutions, and to really engage in the meaningful work of nonviolence um, is important. And, and so I had that. I had those two components, critical social action, or critical social action and, and critical social reflection, or, um, you know, we had those. That middle piece, the, the political efficacy, because the other thing that students were hung up on, is I don't have any power. I don't have any power. And, and, if, and if students feel like they don't have any power, they're certainly not going to, they're not going to engage in the critical social action that is the goal of the Peace Studies program. And so to use King's teaching, um, to look at, you know, one of the things that I love about, about using Kingian nonviolence is we have concrete examples that are really, that are very relatable to say, hey, look, here's, here are these principles. Here where it is each principle was applied successfully. So if, if it can be done then, it can be done now, um, and we have this creativity to do that. We also have, um, we also have beyond the, the Peace Studies curriculum, um, we have student organizations, for instance. So one of the student organizations is called Students Unite. I'm the advisor to that, where we really modeled it after SNCC. So it's a redemptive organization where students are really trying to live the principles that King laid out and that they're using. Um, this student organization has been really active on campus. They're going to, um, they're going to Sacred Rock um, next month to, to show solidarity uh, with the people fighting uh, uh, the, the Dakota Access Pipeline out there. Um, it's, and again, the idea with the student organization is, is we, have the, we have students that are coming into the Peace Studies program, but we also have students that aren't going to take that class 
maybe their major or their program is too rigorous and they can't take extra classes. So we have the student organization set up. So we have a wider breadth of students that are really um, interested in learning Kenyan nonviolence. The leadership of this organization, um, the executive board, actually is required to take a, a nonviolence training. Um, and the nonviolence training we also have on campus. So as a certified Kenyan nonviolence trainer, I've been um, offering one and two day workshops to faculty um, and to students. And, and so people are coming in and learning, you know, learning, you know, kind of an introduction to Kenyan nonviolence. It's also, it's been a really good bridge builder to the community because community members can come in for a one day workshop on Kenyan nonviolence. And you know, this idea that, you know, Stout is in a small town. And, you know, so we can have some conflict between students and the local community. Anytime we can bridge that gap and bring community in, it strengthens both the community um, and what we're doing. Um, it's also, we've had, um, we're, we're, we have scheduled now a, a, a training in high, so in high schools um, and even for sp specific groups on campus, the LGBTQ um, community on campus had specific conflict within their community and wanted to engage in, in a dialogue about nonviolence um, regarding their, their own issues. So, so really, in conclusion, um, you know, I've, I, I, I believe that, that Kenyan nonviolence is both accessible enough um, and comprehensive enough to really provide the foundation of the Peace Studies program that we're developing um, at Stout. Um, I also, this picture was taken, I take students down to Selma Montgomery, Birmingham as a part of one of the, one of the classes that I teach, which, you know, there's just no substitute for experiencing a walk over Edmund Pettus Bridge or going to where, you know, in Montgomery. So, so that's, that's been, um, it's really, you know, it's, it's, it's starting, I guess my hope is that it's starting to change the culture on campus and making Kenyan nonviolence more infused throughout the entire campus. So, thank you.